In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into the new native AI powered rotoscope tool in Final Cut Pro 11 called Magnetic Mask. Magnetic Mask is one of the new and exciting features that just dropped in Final Cut Pro 11. If you wanna see what else is new, I already made a whole video about it. I'll link to it up here and down below. But if you're most excited about Magnetic Mask, you're in the right place, let's go. Like so many things in Final Cut Pro, the Magnetic Mask can be accessed in a few different places in your Final Cut Pro UI. First and foremost, you can find it in the effects browser under masks and keying, here it is right here. You can find it in the magic wand menu at the bottom of the viewer. This is where I typically reach for it. Or you can head on up to modify at the top of your screen and look for Magnetic Mask here. One of the most important things to know about the magnetic mask is that it's not like a color mask. It actually uses AI to detect the shape of your objects, which is why we're gonna be working with this leopard shot to start. Cause I wanna demonstrate for you that the selection doesn't seem to be based on color. So here at the bottom of the viewer, I'm going to add the magnetic mask and you can see in my viewer, I have these new overlays and my cursor has become this eyedropper. So to select my leopard, I'm just going to hover my cursor over any part of its body and click once. And you can see the magnetic mask has done a really great job of selecting my leopard. But I do notice that it's missed this paw here. So I'm just going to click again in that area and now that area is also selected. And I like to take a really good look around the perimeter of my object and fine tune from here. So first and foremost, I can see that this tree in the background has been selected. I think the whiskers on this leopard are confusing Final Cut a little bit. So to deselect that area, I'm going to hold down the option key and click in the area I want to deselect. And I'm also noticing that the magnetic mask is picking up a little bit of the bark from this tree that the leopard is resting on. So I could once again, hold down the option key and click here, or I could just switch from the addition to subtraction tools and not hit option and deselect that area. Now the marching lines around your selection help draw your eye to the area that's been selected, but you should really be focusing on the area that has the color overlay. If you don't like these lines, and typically I don't really care for them, you can disable them by hitting this button here. Now, once you're satisfied with your selection, you're just going to hit the analyze button at the top of the viewer. And you're gonna get this pop-up window that shows your progress. And also down here in the timeline, you're going to see this new magnetic mask editor, and it's going to show you your progress backward and forward as well. So just like the object tracker in previous versions of Final Cut, it's going to start at the point where you had your playhead, track forward, and then jump backward to where your playhead is and track backward. Once it's finished, we're going to hit the done button at the top right of the viewer to see our result. And that is a pretty clean cutout. I can see a little bit of wonkiness here around our leopard's whiskers. So let me show you how to refine the track if you want it to be more picky. In the inspector window, we now have the magnetic mask effect applied. I'm going to hit show to reveal all of the options. To bring back the magnetic mask tools, we're going to hit this icon here that looks like a little person. And now we're back to the window we were just looking at in our viewer with all of these options and our red overlay. So let's take a closer look at those whiskers. I'm going to zoom in on my frame significantly and I'm going to refine the track using these manual selection tools here. So what I wanna do is deselect all of these whiskers. You can see I'm getting like kind of the background here. It just doesn't look perfect. So I'm going to select the minus paint tool and I get a new cursor that's a circle and I can make the circle larger or smaller with this slider here. So for now I'm going to make it larger and I'm going to erase the part of the selection I'm not happy with. And then I'm going to switch to the add brush and I'm going to bring the size of this brush real tiny. And I'm literally just going to draw over these whiskers. All right, in the interest of time, I'm going to stop there, but you can see I really grabbed those whiskers here if you're being really picky. And you can just hit the analyze button again at this point, or if you wanna be super, super precise, depending on the end use of your video, you can actually track frame by frame. This lets you analyze each frame so you have the opportunity to go in and make adjustments or corrections as the tracking is happening. And you'll see down in my magnetic mask editor, the circle where I initially started my initial track. And then every time I hit this frame button, I'm creating a new hash mark. Again, in the interest of time, I'm just going to analyze forward by hitting these double arrows. 
And then I'm going to queue up my playhead to where my hash marks started here in my timeline. And I'm going to track backward. But you can see what a good job it's doing at picking up those whiskers. Let's hit done. And you can see the whiskers definitely look more defined this time around. In the inspector, I want to show you that you can adjust the feather of your mask. With the slider, you go up to a value of 100. Like with many things in Final Cut Pro, if you click on the value of 100 with your mouse button, hold down and press forward, we can go all the way to 200. But I'm going to reset that parameter because I think it looks pretty good. Now, what would you do with this rotoscoped video? Very commonly, people will use it for color correction. So I'm going to hold down the option key, click and drag downward to make a duplicate underneath my first clip and disable the magnetic mask on that bottom clip. Let's open up the color inspector and I'm going to desaturate that background. So the leopard pops a little more and then I'm going to select my masked video and crank up the saturation on the leopard. So that's a really common use for a rotoscope tool like the magnetic mask. Another thing I want to show you about the magnetic mask is that you can apply multiple masks to a single clip. I've got this clip here of these two people rock climbing. If I disable the base clip here, you'll see that I have already rotoscoped out the little girl. Let's also cut out the woman in the shot. So I'm going to select that top clip in the inspector. I'm going to hit this icon to bring back all of my overlays and let's add a new mask. And we can do this in a couple different ways. I can hover my cursor over the top line of magnetic mask in my inspector window and select add magnetic. That'll add another magnetic mask. Or let me bring back those overlays. I can hit this button here in my viewer. So I'm going to add a new mask to this effect. And just like before, I'm going to select the subject that I want to mask out. And you'll notice that this time my selection is green, not red. If at any point I wanted to change the color of my selection, I can do that right here in the inspector. Let's say we would prefer for her to be blue. And just like before, you would just analyze that mask and in your magnetic mask editor, you're going to get a new track. So now I've got two here in my timeline. Let's hit done and check our mask. I do see that it's grabbed this little rock nub underneath her. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. I could go back and polish that up. But what I do want to show you is that right now you can see that in my inspector window, I'm selected on the blue mask, but in the viewer, I'm seeing both the blue and the red. If I only wanted to see the blue selection, I could hit this icon here. So I'm just seeing the blue selection. If I select the first magnetic mask in the inspector, I'm just seeing the red selection. If I want to see both of them again, I hit this button one more time. And you can add as many magnetic masks to your image as your machine can handle. All right, let me show you something else about magnetic masks. I'm going to duplicate this clip of these super cute puppies. And I want to change the color of just this puppy here. So let me add my magnetic mask and analyze it and disable the bottom clip. So we can see that our puppy is cut out. Now I'm going to enable that bottom clip again, select the top clip. Let's change the color of this puppy. Let's make him a little bit more brown than his friends. So I'm going to grab the colorize effect. Now it's only affecting the puppy that I've applied the magnetic mask to. And I'm just going to really try to give this dog a bit of a more subtle coloring. Let's say like so, let's try to keep it pretty realistic. But what you'll notice is that this dog's nose has also been colorized. So the other dogs have black noses and his looks really brown and so do his eyes. And I want to preserve the original color of the nose and eyes. I only wanted to change the color of the fur. Now you may be tempted to open up the magnetic mask tools again and deselect the eyes and nose and retract. But I've been playing around with the magnetic mask for a while now, and I don't think that's the best way to go about it. Mainly, I think because the magnetic mask looks at the overall shape of your object and it's not really driven by variances in color like we saw with the leopard shot at the beginning of this tutorial. So what I would recommend you do in a situation like this is to use the existing tools in Final Cut Pro. So on the magnetic mask line in my inspector, I'm going to drop down and you can see that I can also add a shape and color mask to the magnetic mask. So in this case, I'm going to add color and instead of being on intersect, I'm going to switch to subtract and I'm going to use my color picker to grab this little guy's nose here and let's soften it up a little bit. And now like the natural colors of his nose and eyes 
have been restored. So you may find yourself in situations where you want to apply a shape or color mask in addition to your magnetic mask. Now, another thing I want to show you about the magnetic mask in Final Cut Pro is that you can drag effects right from your effects browser to objects in your viewer using the magnetic mask. So if I just click and drag it and hover, it's going to select the area it thinks I want to select. And then I can just go back and refine the mask, make sure everything's selected. We'll do a quick analyze hit done and you can see we've affected our subject in the inspector window we can also invert the magnetic mask so now the background has the comic effect and our subject is regular live action video kind of a neat look i'm going to undo that and i want to show you that you can do this whole process with multiple effects on a single frame so let's maybe change the color of this sand so i'm going to apply the colorize effect just to the sand here in the foreground. Let's analyze again, hit done, and then make our adjustments. And there you go. I'm gonna get rid of all of those effects and I wanna show you one other thing. Let's apply a blur to this clip. I'm gonna apply it to the entire clip so it's all blurred out. And then if we drop down again on our effect in the inspector, we can, after the fact, add a magnetic mask in the same way. Hit done and the blur is just on our subject, like so. This magnetic mask rivals any third-party rotoscope tool we've seen for Final Cut Pro. I'm genuinely blown away by the results. I'm sure you are too. If you agree with me, let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, here's some other videos I know you're gonna love. I'll see you again.